guys, Tom here for Beyond Examination, the show. Um, today's a special episode because I'm going to talk about something that is kind of a hobby of mine. It's not something I actively pursue, but I always pick up bits and pieces here and there when I see them because it's something I, I've kind of grew up with, and that is prepping and uh, survival. Now, you might have seen shows on TV about doomsday preppers, and it can be kind of funny because it seems like these people are kind of whack jobs, and you think... They think this is going to happen and the sh it's going to hit the fan and it's going to be, it's all these crazy scenarios that just won't happen and these people are wasting tons of money. First of all, don't waste tons of money on prepping and survival and things like that. But be prepared because look at the world around you today. The political landscape in all countries are kind of in upheaval. I mean, it's not so far-fetched that something like a war or something could really turn things on its ear. And you may have to, instead of rely on the infrastructure that the world has, you're going to have to rely on yourself. Um, not to mention weather every year is getting worse, it seems. Earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes... It's really getting to a point where it's second nature for nature to turn on us and it's leaving people without ways to survive. And if you rely on government or other aid, you may just be out of luck because there's only so far that can stretch. Um, the good thing is I don't see anything happening in the world where we can't come back from it. And all you have to really do is provide for yourself for a few days to weeks and things should hopefully go back to normal. But really, this is a hobby. And I implore you guys, if you're interested in getting into prepping or just making sure you're prepared for something, please go and look up other people who specialize in this. This is kind of my fun take on it. As a tech geek, I've added my own touches to it. And there's plenty of things that I prep that other preppers don't. And there's things, rules that, like, keep it to like one bag or keep it a lightweight bag that I just don't follow. Um, I'll go through it and touch on points why I do it this way. But really, this is something I do for fun and I thought it'd be great to show you guys what I have. And um, really, one reason I'm doing this video now is I suggest that anybody who does do this and they have items like rechargeable batteries or things in their bag that have batteries is you set a reminder on your calendar or your phone for every three months or so and that'll let you know to go get out your bags from the closet or your car and check the batteries maybe drain them down a bit so you could charge them up and keep those cells active because the worst thing that could happen is you have an emergency you go to use that stuff and there's no charge in them and the whole reason for having them is because there's no electricity or something of that matter. But really, like I said, and the reason I got into this, and this is going to sound funny, is when I was a young kid, I loved zombies. Still love zombies. And Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, and Resident Evil came out. And I thought to myself, wow, that's kind of cool. Not only is it horror and that, but there's a survival aspect to that. Now, I don't think zombies are actually going to happen. But that's what got me into it as a kid and as I grew and saw that this is actually something that people do. It's just a, a fun way to, you know, it's a fun way of preparing for something awful. But, you know, could really happen in your lifetime and helping keep you and your family safe. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look into some of the things I got here. And we're going to start off with my car bag. This is more of an emergency roadside bag. But it could also, you know, come in handy in multiple situations. But it's smaller than my other two large bug out bags. But let's go take a look. Now here you can see just my whole setup all together. This is a lot of stuff. And one of the things they say when you bug out is to go light. Because you want to be able to move quickly. Um, this is a combination of things I could, you know, bug in as they say. When you're not going to leave, this would all be great for bugging in. But I also know if I have to get out of Dodge, I could grab one or two of these and be fine with just that. But um, we're going to look at this. This is my car kit. And then we will touch on all these other items. Too. First things first, always a flashlight. I think anybody with any sense in their head is going to have at least one flashlight. Now this is something really I really, really like. And it's a car jump starter. Um, it's made by Rav Power. I've done a video on this one. Comes in a nice little case. And there you go. That's what it looks like. And this should have enough juice to even jump my Ford Edge, which is a pretty big crossover vehicle. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. You have to be diligent with the items you have. If I go and I try to check my light, 
it's dead. So if I got into a situation where my car battery was dead, this ain't going to help out in its current state. So you really have to commit to staying on top of keeping these things topped up or they're as bad as not having them to begin with. But it is great. I got this once because I had something plugged into my car and it almost killed my battery. And there's nothing worse than that feeling being somewhere and not being able to leave. I mean, we're so independent and rely on our vehicles and then one day not be able to use them. It's a really strange and awful feeling. So I totally recommend you get one of these. Make sure you do your research because there's certain ones that aren't going to work at all for your vehicle. So get one that's going to work. Spend a little bit extra money. Next up, you're going to want one of these because what the purpose of this roadside kit is for roadside emergencies mostly. So if you have to be on the side of the road changing a tire, you want people to see you because nothing ruins your day more than somebody running over your legs. You know what I'm saying? So get this, be safe when you're out there doing whatever you have to do on the side of the road. Next up is the kind of fun thing I found on Amazon. I really prefer these to the traditional type. Electronic flares. These are things that can stick or be placed around your car and they actually light up. And they have a bunch of different types of ways of lighting up just so people know that you're on the side of the road at night or that you need help. And I like these more than traditional flares because there's not that risk of them blowing up. I mean, flares are phosphorus. If you live in a hot climate, the last thing you want to do is put something that's flammable in your trunk. So as long as you keep up making sure the batteries in these are great, these are a great little tool. This is a three pack and they also have a little flashlight. So if you just need to stick this on to the side of your car for light while you're changing a tire or something, they work for that too. These are real neat. I'm going to try to remember to do a collection of links of where you can find a lot of this stuff in the description below. Now a first aid kit. Most emergency kits are going to have a first aid kit in it for good reason because you're going to get hurt in emergency situations and you may not have access to proper medical facilities or something like that. You're not going to become a surgeon overnight. You're not going to be removing bullets and stuff like that. But the ability to, you know, help out somebody and stop bleeding or just, you know, it's a real big comfort and you could, you know, maybe in the end save somebody's life. But really just, this is a nice thing to have. And I'm a tech guy and when I saw this I knew I had to get it and it's the aux key power inverter. And what a power inverter is, is you can hook this up to your car and it's able to run your electronics on it. Which is great if you've been out of power and you want to access, say you go on your computer, charge your devices, run an air mattress pump. This allows you to do that off of your car battery. Now, it, you got to be careful. If you're doing this with your car off, you're going to kill your battery. If you're doing it with your car on, you're going to be using gas. So you have to be sparingly and know which situations warrant actually using this. But uh, it does come in handy, and especially if you're a camper, if you like to go out into the woods and you have those air mattresses or maybe coffee makers, something that, you know, needs to run off electricity and you don't want to bring a generator or something like that, this can work for those situations as well. And they're usually pretty cheap, and Aux Key is a great brand, so that's another one. Now, this is one item that I share across all three of my bags, and it's a wool blanket. These are kind of like the Army blankets. They're nice because they're super warm. They're going to hold in the heat and they're sort of water repellent so they're going to be great you know if, when people are in accidents they get wrapped wrapped in a blanket this is great to have for that this is great for having if you're taking the family out to go see fireworks or something and you need to lay down a blanket you've got it in there not everything has to be doom and gloom there's a lot of situations that you know this stuff can be used on everyday basis last item in the bag is ex extendable tire iron a lot of cars come with tire irons but they're short and don't give you the leverage especially if the things are locked on um, so this gives you that extra leverage to actually get your lugs off and as a bonus you can use this to smash a window if somebody's trapped in their car. There's multiple ways if you're creative and use your mind that this could be useful in an emergency situation. Now there is one item that's not in my bag but it's in my center console and there's a reason for that and it's one of those flashlights that you can wind and it also has a glass break 
and the seatbelt cutter. And the reason it's in my front console is if you were to get into a situation where you're trapped and need to cut your seatbelt, you would not be able to get to your bag and back. So that is why it's in my car and not here in the video. But that's a great item to have, you know, just so you have a flashlight that always has battery and you have those two devices that could get you out if, God forbid, your car had gotten submerged in water. Now, before we move on to the bags themselves, I want to show two items that don't actually fit in the bags, but they can be really essential to an emergency situation. And first, that's these wise food containers. They include a lot of food, usually enough for a week for a few people. And that's important. Look at the news before a major storm hits. People are in the stores and are buying up the food. So food is not always something you're going to be able to come by, especially in an emergency situation. And good food is even harder to find. You can stockpile cans of tuna, but it's not going to give that same psychological benefit as an actual meal you can sit down and have with your loved ones and it can really really make a difference also get yourself a nice lantern that you can put in the middle of the table so everybody's not eating in the dark because you want to keep those spirits up because one of the best assets you have in an emergency situation is your mind and if that ain't in the right place you could really get yourself into some danger now the first bag we're going to look at is this guy started off as my medical bag and morphed into this gigantic bag and the fact of the matter is a lot of survivalists would hate this bag because it's way too heavy and that's because it contains a lot and it's meant to be at home if i had to get the heck out of here i'd bring it with me and if i had to go on foot i would know which items i could get rid of right away so really like i said i don't go by the rules because this is just kind of a fun thing that i do and if you're really serious about it, guys, there's people out there that you should go and watch. But let's go ahead and take a look. On the bottom of the bag, I had one of those wool blankets wrapped up because everybody should have one of those multiple uses. And it's just a nice comfort to have a blanket. Also, metal containers. Um, you can cook in them. You can heat them up. You can put clean water in them. There's a lot of uses for metal containers. Just if they do have plastic parts make sure you're off before you start heating them up but plastic and uh, metal containers can really make a difference being my medical bag i also have disinfectant spray and hand purell hand wash because you want to make sure if you're working with somebody who's bleeding you don't catch anything or it's a more sterile environment for them it's just nice because you may be out in the wild and there's not facilities that keep clean this can work as a stopgap for the moment. You know, nothing's better than clean water, but this can help in situations where you have to deal with bodily fluids or, you know, just keep some kind of cleanliness. Okay, keep a few of those little uh, floss packs that you get from the dentist in your bug out bag. Not only is it good dental hygiene, you can use that to wrap up and do little twine and things like that. You know, a lot of times, if you're like me, you just chuck these because you have your own. So just take those from the dentist, throw them in your bag. You'll find a use for a lot of things if you have to be out in the wild. This is a water filtration. Now, uh, what it is is one of those life straws. But it's not a life straw. It's kind of a knockoff one. And what it is, is you can put this into the worst water in the world, suck on it, and get clean water or clean er water. Um, it has a bunch of things so that you can pump it into a water bottle to keep for later. Um, one thing I would suggest is, while this will filter out a lot of stuff, there's still that microscopic bacteria and stuff that might get through. So I would just suggest if you have to drink water in the wild, try to boil it first and then use this to be the last line of defense. It might not always be possible and you might just have to use this, but really you don't want to play around with water in the wild because it can make you seriously ill and kill you. So really be careful when it comes to water out in the wild. Now remember how I said it was a medical bag? Here's one of the few medical items in there, and this is another first aid kit. has a ton of items listed on it, and you know, it's very basic stuff. Like I said, you're not going to become a doctor overnight, but this could help out with minor uh, injuries. For injuries that are a little bit more tough, super glue. It's your, your best friend when you have one of those big open gashes. You could just go ahead and spread that in close it and it should work um i mean last resort if you can go to the hospital go to the hospital don't sit in your backyard suturing yourself up with super glue and then also within that compartment is this anchor flashlight i like the anchor brand because these batteries are rechargeable through usb so if you have other means that you will see in my other bag for charging 
you have a way of charging these lights in case the emergency expands and keeps going you're not going to run out of batteries because you can recharge them on your own and they're very bright flashlights hanging off of my bag is this knife it's called a hori knife and the reason it's it's really neat is it's super sharp to begin with you're going to be able to do a lot of jobs with it but it's also shaped like a spade so you can dig with it if you need to has the saw blade and it's just got a, a can opener it has a lot of different uses and that's one thing you want in your bug out bag is if an item can do double duty triple duty because you want to cut down on space and weight and this is just a multi-function strong knife that will do a lot of jobs now inside the bag i have some of that food from the kit and the reason i have some of that split up is you never know exactly what the situation is going to be if you will be able to lug around that big container or if you leave it or you leave another bag it's good to try to split up your things you can have specialized bags but if that's the only bag you have then you don't have everything you need so to try to split up some essential things into multiple bags is not a bad idea and this is just enough stuff to keep you going and it's in a bag so it shouldn't get wet tarp um this is kind of I'm not going to say a game changer, but it makes a, a, a good bit of sense. Because a tarp can become shelter. You can string it up and make it into a tent. You can line it on the ground so that you're not laying on wet ground. It's kind of just, a, your mind is the limit to what you can do with a tarp, as silly as that sounds. So find them. You can usually find them on clearance in a lot of stores. I don't know why tarps go on clearance, but it always seems like I run into tarps on clearance. Pick up a few because they really do help out in a situation. Gloves. Now, in a, you're not going to use these when you're trying to deal with somebody with a cut. You think this is a medical bag, you should have some of those uh, rubber nitrile gloves. Um, I do suggest that because you do not want to make contact with someone's blood. But this is good for, you know, normal out in the wilderness trying to, you know, work with wood or anything else. You can get real bad abrasions on your hands and stuff. So just having a good pair of work gloves in your bag can make a difference. This is more food, but this is like your last resort food. They're ration bars. Um, they are have a five-year shelf life. They're a lot of calories. I've never tried them, and I'm afraid to because feeling them through the package, you can actually kill someone with one of these. And eating them could probably do the same. So this is a last resort, but it's great because that's a few days worth of calories right there in that kind of and you don't have to worry about because it it's good for five years so really it's nice to have now some of my favorite things are these little stoves this little box it folds up as a stove you put one of these things in there you light it and it makes a fire for about 15 minutes and it's an intense fire so you could put one of your camp stove items on top it's going to boil water for you and just you know it's a very handy thing to have out in the woods because if you've ever watched a survival show trying to make fire in the wilderness is not easy if you think you're going to do that with a few matches and stuff it's not that easy so this can be great for doing small things or you can use these to start bigger fires so really these little stoves can be great especially when it comes to boiling that water to make it safer for yourself now i'm sorry for the quality here guys but uh i actually went back and as i was packing up things i noticed that i missed an entire section in my first bag i showed here and i just want to go quick and show you exactly what was in that um here we have a gas mask if you're a fan of the division the video game or something you'll notice that this looks a lot like that and really it's going to help out with certain things but it always depends on the type of filter you have on here this is a basic one um, you can get these on ebay and they will help out in a lot of situations but i mean if it's really really nasty stuff that chemical warfare or something like that you're still probably screwed but this will help in different situations and like I said it depends on the filter you have on there and they will tell you exactly what they do on the descriptions but that's just nice to have on there if you're really paranoid um, secondly a fire starter just another way to make fire bug spray um, if you're out there you don't want to catch West Nile or something or you just want to keep the bugs from biting the crap out of you bug spray can really come in handy a spork tool type thing i got these on amazon they sell them for like three bucks or so as an add-on item all the knowledge you could ever need it's a very highly reviewed book um thing is i've never read it and that's another thing they always say 
don't get a book and expect to read it when the uh, situation happens. That's the worst time to try to learn something new. And like I said, I'm working on that. And I figure it's better to have it in the bag and be able to reference it than not have it at all. So that was the few items that I left out of the first bag. So that was everything in the secondary medical bag. And that was pretty heavy. That has nothing on my main bag. Um, this is kind of like my Walking Dead, here comes the apocalypse bag. Because it has everything I'd want in it. And if I can only take one bag, it would be this bag. So let's take a look. Off the bat, a really good uh, radio. You can find these on Wish, Alibaba, Amazon. They're not expensive at all. And they, if you know how to do it, you can get police bands, fire bands, emergency bands. So you can be in the loop on what situations are going on. And you can use them for communication. But know this. This is not a CB radio. This is considered a ham radio. And without a license, trying to communicate on one of these is illegal. So if you're wanting to do this as a hobby, go the right route. I'm sure in an emergency situation, if you had to use this to communicate, you'd probably be able to get away with it. But do not communicate on this unless you've gone through the required courses and got the license. Uh, it's neat to listen. I don't know if it's illegal in any of your states. Look into that on your own. But it is, you know, fun to know what is going on with the uh, emergency responders in your neighborhood. Um, I also suggest getting the earpieces. That way that you don't have to always have this blaring. If it's a situation where you want to remain quiet but stay in the loop, you could go ahead and use one of the earpieces. Think ahead. You may not always be in a dry environment. And as you know, electronics don't do so well with water. So get yourself a gallon sized bag so if you need to, you can plop it right in there and be safe from having your equipment ruined. I also want to suggest that there is a way to charge those batteries, not on all of them, but by USB. And that's going to be important when we get towards the end of this video because USB devices are going to be the savior for us tech survivors because I have something that's going to charge those items for us. I actually have two things that's going to help us charge those when the grid goes down. So these electronic devices stay fun. Now in a fun Batman kind of way, there's a grappling hook. Now these are kind of cool looking, but they are also cheap. My model had another piece that went this way, but it was attached by a rubber plastic gasket type, and it snapped. So imagine trying to do something with that. But it still works as a pinch if you had to hang up your food in a tree to keep things. There's a lot of functions that this little claw can do. And it can be used still as a grappling hook if you hit it right. But I mean, if you don't have to climb a wall, don't climb a wall. You're not Batman. Again, another knife. This is just your basic hunting knife. It's got a lot of uses in the wild. And to be honest, if it's a bad enough situation, there's bad people out there that might want to do harm to you or your family, they're going to think twice about doing it to somebody that has one of these on their hip. And speaking on the same idea of, you know, items that are functional, but can also be used as self-defense, and more importantly, have that look that gives the person who's wanting to do harm to you the second idea of even messing with you at all is a good old-fashioned machete. Um, if you have this, I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with you. I don't care what I have. The chances I would take to mess with somebody with a full-size machete just isn't worth it. So that gives people pause. Not to mention a machete is great for clearing brush if you're in the wilderness. And like I said, have those items pull double duty. I also have a giant yellow, bright yellow crowbar. Um, again, it has a lot of legitimate uses, but I mean, the first thing somebody's going to see when they see you is a bright yellow crowbar. Again, is that the guy you're gonna wanna try to mess with or are you gonna go after that guy that looks a less less intimidating. So really, psychological. No one expects you to go to bat with somebody and try to take their head off with a crowbar, but it's psychological. I really like this. This is a hand crank flashlight radio. It can charge solar, which is not the best way to charge, but it's something, and you can hand crank it. So this does all that, plus you can make sure you bring them with all the wires charge devices off of this it's not going to be the best and it's going to just give you enough but it's better than nothing at all 
And I love that. It does so many different things. Plus, it can help out my other devices. It can help charge my walkie-talkie with this wire. Or it can give me enough of a charge on my cell phone to try to get a call out. So it really is kind of amazing. And to have that ability to put it in a windowsill to charge, look at that. I didn't even know that. When you put the solar panel up, the light automatically comes on. So that's pretty neat. And it, I love this. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Also, we kind of buy these things and put them away and then never look at them again. Keep the manuals and stuff with them because it's great to have this stuff, but if you get out in the wild, you don't have internet to go check for manuals online, you don't know how to use the thing, it's not going to help you. So if it's better than nowhere else, put it in your bag. These little containers are great. You can cook in them. They come with a set of cups so that you can make coffee in them, make food in them. Having a container that will hold up to that, like when you put it on that little stove I showed, is great. And having coffee in the apocalypse is not such a bad thing. It's like eating a meal with your family. It brings you back to a psychological state of normalcy. And that extra caffeine can really help. That being said, you're going to have to have coffee on you. It's not like you're going to come across it out in the wild in most times. So get yourself a cheap jar of instant. It's going to be, you know... Could be a lifesaver in the end. Paracord. Lots of cheap stuff out there, but a lot of it's going to do what you need, like hanging up a tarp to make a tent. Um, I'm Don't take that grappling hook, attach it to this, and think you're going to scale the walls of some institution. Again, you are not Bruce Wayne. This stuff is not rated to take that kind of load. It'll take quite a lot, but it's not rated for that. And if you do want to grapple and stuff, there is climbing rope out there it's super expensive and it's the only reason i haven't added it to my collection but it is out there and if you do know in a situation where there's maybe you live on a lot of cliffs or something uh, climbing rope can come in handy but price wise for that one little instance i might need to climb something i just don't put that in there and you got to know where to draw the line there is a ton of stuff you can get for your bags but you've got to tailor it to your needs your environment. Here we have a set of cookware and dishes, all metal, all that you're able to cook with and serve with. And usually they're on eBay, super cheap. You can get them with sponges and cutlery included. They're really nice little sets. And think about it, it's great to have the ability to cook food, but if you don't have anything to cook it in, what are you going to do? You know, you can't really stick a whole ton of food on a branch and hold it over without, you know, burning it. More solid fuel. This is the stuff for the camp stoves and it's invaluable. You should keep a lot of this on hand because, like I said, you're going to be needing the boil water. You're going to have to heat up things to start a fire. Just having that heat source and the ability to start something real quick and real intense is nice. Keep a roll of duct tape or even better, Gorilla Tape in your bag. It has tons of uses and it's just invaluable. Um, it can patch up a tarp. It can help keep things, a bag that has ripped from having too much in it together. You know, the list goes on and on about how useful just a simple bit of this. I mean, this stuff is so tough, you could probably even use it to patch up a small boat hole, you know? I mean, it's just really, really tough stuff, the Gorilla Tape. Here inside this bag, we have what looks like dishes, but this is actually a bigger stove. Um, I forget the actual name of this, but this type of stove gets hot real quick and it uses the heat to its advantage. It's better than that other simple one and it really kind of is more efficient and it's going to cook hotter. So I really like this one. I want to find some time to actually put this stuff to a test because they say all this stuff is great to have, but if you haven't tested it out, the worst possible time is during an emergency. And I'm I'm breaking that rule. There's a lot of stuff in my bag I haven't personally tested, and that's something I have to work on. Hard knuckle work gloves, tactical gloves. Um, yes, you can punch somebody in the mouth with one of these, but really these are here to keep your hands safe, like the work gloves in my other bag. I want everybody to be clear that you're not going out there like the Punisher during an emergency situation. Yes, you want to be capable of defending yourself, but you're not going out there looking for trouble. You're looking to survive. So please don't get the idea that this is, you know, gearing up for war. This is gearing up for survival. Here I have a really nice SOG uh, multi-tool. has a bunch of different tools on it and knives and stuff. Just great to have. 
a knife sharpener so when you're out there if you dull one of your knives you still have a way of keeping them sharp a few of uh, these masks you know they can help in certain situations they ain't gonna help help with a gas attack or anything extreme but if you're working around you know blood or there's a lot of debris in the air from maybe an explosion or something these will help and here's this this is another way i like having multiple options for heating things and this is a propane tank somewhere in my bag i'm sure we'll run across it if not um you could put a little burner on top of here and it gives you another source of clean ways of cooking and i just like i said i like having ways of cleaning water and cooking food because those are necessities to life we have another life straw this is an actual life straw that helps you drink dirty water a little waterproof fire kit like you say you might be in a situation that floods or something and you still want a way to make that fire quick so that you can dry out before you get hypothermia barbecue gloves you might not think of this but say you're heating up those things on the campfire how do you get them off and deal with them you're not gonna be able to hold two sticks together this is great for doing that just grabbing the things and then being able to serve people or dealing with really hot stuff so i like having these in my bag another set of those bars in case we don't have the other bag we still have a way of keeping ourselves going a little handsaw um you can bring an axe with you but there's going to be things that are just going to be easier with the saw motion so this thing can really help when you're trying to make firewood and a small fishing kit um Fishing is going to be hit or miss, but it is a way to try to get protein into your diet if you're in the wild. Um, you can try to trap animals uh, if you have experience with that. And protein is going to be trouble if you're looking for food out in the wild. And this just gives you another option. Last but not least, and my favorite thing as a tech guy, is this. It's a portable solar panel. You go ahead, you put this out in the sun. It has ports on the back to plug in your USB devices, and it's going to charge them. It's going to charge them super slow, and it may take a few days for you to actually charge these de devices, but it's a source of energy. This is something that, as a society, we've become used to, having on-demand electricity. But that's not a given, and it takes so little for that whole infrastructure to go down and then you were cut off from communication and things like that so having two devices this and that hand crank solar panel th th those things will help you get along with with electricity but please don't rely on that or please don't just rely on what i've shown you here today if i've done anything if i've made you aware that maybe you should be a bit more prepared for what it is Go out there and look up the professionals because there's a lot of great information out there and you don't have to be some wackadoodle who thinks that the zombies are coming. You could just be somebody who wants to be not a victim but somebody who is going to be there for their family and be able to survive on their own. And you know I'm going to do my best to find all this stuff and put links in the description below. It may not be complete. If there's something you see that I didn't link, just leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to try to get back to you with a link to it. Um, if you could please like, share, comment, subscribe, every little bit helps the channel out. You could also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at edgelimited13, always posting about videos and fun stuff over there. And again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.